Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on installing Android Studio Beta Version 0.8.0 .0 on Windows 7. Today we're going to go through the process of downloading all the required components, which includes the Java Development Kit, and then the Android Studio Install Program, and we'll go through the install of both of those components and any additional configuration that we need, including configuration of the Android SDK Manager and creating an Android Virtual Device. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we need to do is get the components that we need in order to install them. So what you're going to want to do is get online on my very slow Firefox running on a virtual machine on Mac. Alright, so what you're going to want to do is get online and go to the uh, first thing you want to do is want to go to oracle.com and grab the Java JDK. Um, we have the URL just flashed there for a second. Hit the download button for the Java Platform JDK. In this case, we have 8U, version, uh, 8U11. So hit the download button. And give it a second to connect. So this gives us the whole list of all the ones that we can get. You're going to want to hit the Accept License Agreement. And then for Windows, I found out that it's a requirement, actually, for Android Studio. It's a requirement to have the 64-bit version of the JDK, so we're going to go ahead and download that. So you would click on this, and your browser should ask you for a place to save it. Now I've already actually downloaded it, so after it asks me for the thing, we'll cancel that. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this because I've already downloaded it. Next thing we need to do is need to go over to Android Studio and grab the binary file from there that we can use to install. So if you do a simple search, uh, Google search for Android Studio, You'll come up with a link that when you click on it, it will take you to this. So here we're going to download Android Studio Beta version 0.8.0 .0 with the Android SDK for Windows. Click on that. Accept the license agreement. Hit the download button. And again, I'm going to go ahead and cancel this because I've already got it. But it will give you some additional instructions here that you may want to take a look at when you're doing your install. But we are going to cover these things here as well. So now that we have all the required components, let's go ahead and minimize this. First thing we want to do is install the JDK. So if you double click on that and get that program going. So it's likely going to ask you if you want to allow the programming, the following program to make changes to your computer. Say yes. And it should kick off the install program now. The Windows installer is preparing to install. So let's go ahead and get some stuff. All right, so here's the main install program. Let me give it a second while it's preparing the installation wizard. All right, so go ahead and hit the next button. Uh, it gives you the options for custom setup. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the source code. We don't need any of the source code. And we'll leave the uh, public JRE and uh, the development tool stuff. So go ahead and hit next. And now the uh, install program is going to go ahead and do its thing for a few minutes. So go grab a coffee or a drink or whatever it is that you like while this is taking its time. All right, so the install program is doing its thing now. OK. So now it's asking you for the destination folder. If you're okay with the folder as it's specified, go ahead and hit next. And then we'll continue on with the install. Okay, and after a few minutes, depending on the speed of your computer, the JDK is finally done, so you can go ahead and hit close. And now let's move on to the Android Studio install. Double click that to get that going. Okay, window does its access control thing. Let's go ahead and hit yes to allow the install to proceed. Okay, so now we have the Android Studio setup wizard. So let's go ahead and hit next. I'm going to install this for anyone using this computer, so if other users want access to it, they can. Asking for this uh, folder that you want the install to be located in. And this seems okay to me. Actually, you know what? I don't know why there's that one there. So I'm going to go ahead and browse real quick, hopefully. 
and change that. Okay. I'd ask you if you'd like a start menu folder and hit install. Now we can go ahead and kick back for a few minutes while this install completes. Okay, so installation was complete. Go ahead and hit next. And we're going to go ahead and start Android Studio and we'll see what happens. So hit finish. Okay, so you may or may not run into this uh, error message. Basically what it's saying is that no Java machine installation is found and that you need to install a 64-bit JDK. Um, if you already have that installed, which we do, you need to create a Java home variable and the environmental variables. Um, you may already have a Java home in there, depending on like a previous installation of Java, but we'll take care of this to accommodate what Android Studio wants. I'm going to hit OK. In Windows, we come down here to start control panel. Actually, uh, that's incorrect. Start computer and then properties. So you right click on computer and then select properties. And then hit advanced system settings. And we want environment variables. And if you notice here in system variables, if you look through them, We have no Java Home, so that's the problem. So we're going to hit New, Java underscore Home. And then to the variable value, we want to put the path to our JDK. So we're going to come in here in the Program Files, Java, and JDK 11, or 8.11. So you can copy that, paste it in here, hit OK. Okay, so this is basically telling the system where it should look for Java whenever it needs it. And then exit out of that. Okay, now that we have the JDK installed and Android Studio installed and our Java Home environment variable set, we're ready to go ahead and start up Android Studio and configure the Android SDK Manager and then also configure an Android virtual device. So if we go to Start, Android Studio, Okay, so this is the Welcome to Android Studio screen. Notice that there are a number of things that you can do here. You can start a new project, import a project, open a project, use version control if you use it, configure various options, and then there's some docs and how-tos. In order to configure the SDK Manager, we're going to hit this Configure button, and we'll select SDK Manager, and it'll launch the SDK Manager. And it goes out and takes a look at all the things that you have installed, and then compares it to the things that are available and tells you, you know, what you can and can install or need to or don't need to install. So we'll go ahead and do an update to the SDK tools. I'm going to deselect all this Android L stuff because we're not interested in that right now. And I'm going to deselect all of the wearable stuff because we're not interested in that either. We are interested in Android 4.0 for best touch projects. So we'll select that. <coughs> And we'll also add Google Play services because we need those for bus touch projects. And we'll deselect Google USB driver because we don't need those at all. So we're going to do the install six packages. Click up here for the root. Do an accept license. And do install. So now it is going to go out and it's going to download all the things that it needs. And this actually takes a little while so um, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here and then I'll catch up to it when it's just about done because uh, we don't really need to sit here watching it downloading and unzipping things but it will take a little bit of while so we will be back shortly okay it looks like we're just about done with the installation of all the APIs and everything that we picked alright so everything that we've uh, selected has been installed but we do need to re-initialize the uh, SDK and AVD Manager if we want to use the new stuff. Um, I'm not going to do that because we're not going to use that at the moment. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and close this. Now, the only way to actually get to the AVD 
manager is through a project. So let's back up here real quick. I'm going to do a new dummy project just to get this thing up and running and kind of show you what it looks like a little bit. So click there on new product, new project. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, leave all the defaults. Change this just to address that one error down there. Um, I'm just going to leave all this stuff. I'm not going to worry about anything. Just take the defaults of everything because we don't really care about the project. And it's going to take a few minutes actually to generate the project and to build it and display it in the little preview window that it has. So we'll give it a few moments to do that. And minimize that so you notice that it's loading the project now it's actually going to build it as well which is kind of interesting but I guess it has to download this Gradle uh, service which is the new compiler okay it's uh, done with the build process and downloading all the things that it needed to download hopefully that's just a one-time operation We'll find out. So now it's going to start bringing the sample application up in uh, Android Studio. <clears throat> and while we're waiting for it, let's talk about some of the things as they come up. Uh, first thing here is the tip of the day. Um, you know, there could be some interesting tips here for you, so you don't want to leave it up. You never know when you learn something new. Um, you can configure it to show the tips or not show the tips on startup. And then go ahead and close it. Down here is the little status bar of things that it's doing. Go ahead and hit got it to get that out of the way. So once we get up and going here, uh, we'll have the AVD manager available to us right up here. And the SDK manager is available to us right here. The other one that's pretty handy is the Android device monitor. Um, that tells you about things that you have hooked up to Android Studio. And um, you can open up things like Logcat and things from there. So, and also figure out if you've lost your connection to your target device. So that's a good one to get familiar with as well. We're not going to cover that in this tutorial. All right, it's uh, finally starting to draw some of the screens that we need for development. It's going to show us some of our Java files and our activity files, the XML files. Uh, that are you know, the layout files that you need. Um, in a moment, there's going to be a little preview that will come up here, which is actually pretty cool because it shows you kind of a Nexus 4 and lets you see what your app is looking like while you're working on it. And I'll let that finish real quick just because I don't want to hog up all the processes when I go to launch the uh, Virtual Device Manager. Right, I'm going to go ahead and launch the uh, Virtual Device Manager just to get it going. So you want to click this icon right here. So now you see the preview pane came up so that's pretty cool. So the virtual device manager should take a few moments to initialize and then we can create our virtual device. Okay, so here's the Android virtual device manager. Go ahead and minimize all this so we can look at it. I'm going to go ahead and create one. Create a new one. I'm going to call it Buzz Touch. Type of device. You know, there's lots of choices. Uh, let's just go with a. Let's go with a Nexus 2012 Nexus 7. Uh, target. I want the uh, Android 4.0. We'll go ahead and. I think that's the only choice for there, yep. Uh, so you get the choice of whether you want a hard, hardware keyboard present or not. And you can also choose to skin it. So I'm going to do with dynamic hardware controls. You can have cameras if you want, change the memory options, size of the storage, and all that kind of good stuff. Um, if you select snapshot, then 
it should, in theory, allow the virtual device to initialize on subsequent initializations faster than the first one uh, because it already has a like an image in memory. So you can choose to do that or not. Um, then go ahead and OK, and it will tell you what it created. And then, as you can see, we have a new virtual device. So I'm not going to go ahead and start it up because sometimes it does take a long time for that to start up. Um, but just trust that that's what you need to do to create it. So there you have it. That is installing Android Studio on Windows 7 um, and creating an Android virtual device and also showing you how to use your Android SDK manager. So hopefully this is uh, helpful. If you have any questions at all, leave some comments for the video. And I uh, look forward to providing you with you with some more videos to get you through your Android adventures. Take care and happy developing.